G'day, my name is Lloyd, and today we are going to be trying out the Sony A7 III underwater housing made by Mekon slash Seafrogs for the Sony A7 III, which I'm filming on now, and the Sony A7 III R. So if that's something you're interested in, stick around. So, full disclosure, before I start unboxing this housing, I'm a fan of the Mekon housings. I've had a Mekon housing for my older Sony NEX5R since 2014. And this housing has traveled all around the world with me and it has been phenomenally reliable. And that's one thing people worry about when they're buying a Mekon housing is that it will somehow destroy their camera, it will flood. But this housing was with me for a year as a dive master in underneath Indonesia. I used it every day and I didn't have any issues with it whatsoever. Some drawbacks were obviously it's got a fixed port on it so you cannot change that out for different lenses. I did have a wide angle dome lens that can screw onto the front of this housing but that is a wet lens so you're not really getting the quality there and you can't really change the lenses that you're gonna put inside of the housing. So that was one of the drawbacks with this camera. It also didn't quite fit the Sony NEX5R perfectly. So I had to make a couple of modifications to actually access all of the controls on this camera. So that's something that I'm hoping Mekon's newer lines of housings have addressed. So since buying that older housing, Mekon has rebranded to Seafrogs, although I did still purchase this from the Mekon website, mekon.com.hk. I paid 689 US dollars for this housing. There are versions of the Sony a7 III housing that I found on eBay, but they were all the version one, whereas this is the version two housing that came in the white color option, which I quite like. So I'm looking forward to seeing that. So let's get into it. I should also mention that when I ordered this online, it said three to five business days from Hong Kong to Australia, which I thought was pretty ambitious considering the uh, current situation in the world. And it took about two weeks, which I was pretty impressed with, to be honest. Um, I've already taken out all of the packaging, including all the bubble wrap that was in here. It was very well packaged and the accessories. So let's have a look at the housing itself. Now this kit includes the six inch wide angle dome port, um, but they still give you the flat port with the housing as well, which is brilliant because that is gonna suit a wide variety of lenses. And here it is. So first impressions are that it's very well made. It's, it's, it's a polycarbonate material and it feels very solid. I can already see access to most of the controls on the camera by the looks of things on this housing. I'm really looking forward to trying it out. If you have a look on the back of the housing, you can see you've got access to pretty much all of your controls. I'm not sure if this camera gives you access to 100% of the controls on your housing. And it has a nice uh, magnified piece there for seeing your viewfinder as well. Moving to the top of the housing and you can see you've got a very nice looking mode dial and exposure compensation dial with the uh, replica of the Sony dial printed on there which is a really nice touch. You've also got access to your custom buttons on the top as well. Moving to this side of the housing you can see that it has a vacuum pump system which is something that I believe is new to the version 2 of this housing. So that allows you to pressurize the housing or rather unpressurize it before you take it underwater to check if it leaks. The catch for unlatching the housing seems pretty sturdy. Don't mind me because this is the first time I'm ever doing it. How do I? There we go. At least you're not gonna open it accidentally. And inside, what have we got here? So looking inside the housing, we have zoom gears for the various lenses that you can put inside of this housing. And one thing that I can use the flat port for is my Sigma 35mm f1.4, which I think will take some pretty cool shots underwater. They actually give you two zoom lenses. I'm not sure which two lenses these are for. We'll have to figure that out. Inside the housing, you can see the control levers that will control all of the functions of your Sony a7 III camera. Also in the version two housing of this Mekon slash Seafrogs design is a leak detection system. So this is new. My older Mekon housing did not have this at all. And if it detects water, you'll get a little uh, flashing light and alarm, which means you should go up 
straight away to save your camera. Additionally, inside the housing is a hot shoe connector for the top of your camera to connect your strobes to, uh, which is something new that the older Mekon housings did not have as well. So, so far, I am very, very impressed. All right, so some other things that came in the box. In this pouch, we have what looks like a wrist strap and a shoulder strap. We also have oh, anti-fog sheets. So little moisture absorbing things you can put inside the housing before you go for your dive or snorkel so that you can absorb the moisture in the housing and hopefully not get your lens fogging up. There is also a spare O-ring, O-ring grease, a lens cloth, and a little pick for picking out your O-ring for inspections and uh, re-oiling, which is a really nice feature. Some brief instructions about setting up your housing and directing you to the Sea Frogs website, even though again, I bought this from the Mekon website. And additionally, there is a fairly decent user manual that tells you how to use your underwater housing, because once you start putting in different lenses, and lens gears and strobes and with the leak detection system and the vacuum pump, it actually becomes quite a complicated thing. Um, and I've got to say, I think it's pretty damn good value for what you pay for it. So of course this kit also came with the six inch wide angle dome port. So let's check that out. So straight away, I'm impressed that the wide angle dome port comes with this nice soft cover to keep it scratch free. The problem or not a problem because it is a budget housing, but the problem with these uh, underwater dome ports from Mekon is they are plastic, so they will scratch very easily. Let's have a look underneath that. It's a nice dome port. It's a six inch dry dome port that you can put onto the housing and it greatly expands the number of lenses you can use, including wide angle lenses with your housing, which was never an option with the older Mekon housings that just had that fixed port. So this is actually something I'm very, very excited to try out. And despite being a plastic port, you can see that it's actually really, really well done and nicely polished. And I think the optics will be, you know, pretty reasonable. So for comparison, here is the six inch dry dome port compared to the wet lens wide angle that I used to have that could still take fairly decent shots underwater and will give you a nice perspective. So again, I'm so excited to try out this one. And inside the dome port packaging, they have given me another O-ring, O-ring grease, the pick, the lens cloth, a manual and another zoom gear as well. So those are all nice little touches. So there you go, that's what comes in the Mekon slash Seafrogs version two underwater housing kit for the Sony A7 III. Let's pop the camera in and take it down to the pier and see if it leaks. Well, I'm back and the housing for the Sony a7 III from Mekon slash Seafrogs performed as expected. I didn't have any issues with leaking, not that I was really worried about that. The housing didn't fog up at all. There were no issues there. As you would have noticed on the footage, I didn't really check the dome port too carefully and I think there was some bits of plastic maybe left over from the manufacturing process on the inside of the dome that left those dots you saw on the footage. So I need to clean that out before I take it in the water the next time. But beyond that, there are a few issues that I need to point out that I experienced with this housing. So the biggest issue would be the mode dial on top. It wasn't making good contact with the mode dial on the camera. So I'd be turning this, but the mode on the camera wouldn't be changing. If you kept turning it, you could eventually get it to change, but I think it's a grip issue between the lever 
on the bottom of this and the top of that mode dial. So I might be able to add some rubberized grip to the bottom of this to actually resolve that issue. I wouldn't say it's a deal breaker for the price of this housing. I'm still very impressed, but that was something that, you know, was notable when I was underwater. Another thing about this housing is that it's extremely buoyant. So as you can see, the air volume of this housing is quite big and the Sony's not a very heavy camera. So it was floating and I was just snorkeling. So I was trying to push it down and uh, I couldn't really duck dive with it because it was just so buoyant. I will be getting a tray for it with handles and I'll be able to add some weights to that to get it more neutral in the water. I mean, if you're using it for surf photography, the fact that it's actually positively buoyant is probably a good thing. If you drop it and let it go, it's gonna float. But if you're diving, you want something that's gonna be neutrally buoyant. You don't want to be fighting this thing like a balloon that keeps wanting to pop up to the surface. Uh, but again, that's something that's easily resolvable. Uh, it's got great hardware on the bottom here for attaching uh, various trays and other mounting equipment where you can attach weights and, and dial in the buoyancy to the way you like it. Even though I will be getting a tray for this camera, it's actually very usable without it. Uh, despite the fact it's a full frame camera in a housing for a full frame camera, you can see it's got an ergonomic grip. You can easily access the shutter, the on off switch with one finger. You do need two hands to access pretty much all of the other controls, but you certainly can use it without the tray. One other thing to be aware of is if you are getting this housing and you have the Sony kit lens, which I do, which is the 28 to 70 millimeter lens, and you want to use it in the housing, it doesn't come with a zoom gear by default for that lens. So whatever focal depth you set at the start of the dive is what it's going to be set at. So in my case, it was 28 mil. Again, not a deal breaker. I can easily get another zoom gear for that lens or use a different lens, which I'm planning on doing. So if you're still here, thank you so much for watching my video all the way to the end. I hope that you found something in it useful. Hopefully you know a bit more about the Mekon slash Seafrogs housing. And if you're thinking about getting one, this might have swayed your decision in one way or another. I will be doing more testing on this housing in the future. So I'm gonna be taking it diving. I will get the buoyancy dialed in. I'm gonna be trying it with different lenses and different ports. So if you're interested in that, then maybe consider subscribing. And if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. I would really appreciate it. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again in the future. See ya.